Hello friends, this is Nick from iNovi Solutions and we continue with the next uh, module from this VMware series which is deploying and configuring a virtual machine. So before I start with uh, actual configuration of the virtual machine and the lab, I just want to show you a few prerequisites that were um, needed for me to set up before I continue with uh, with the lab. So if you are following my lab uh, particularly, you will need to have this in place, but if you don't, that's okay. So um, if you remember, we've installed uh, ESXi 01, and uh, here you can see which, what is the console, um, the user interface when I log into the ESXi. So um, the first storage that uh, I have is um, when we installed the actual uh, ESXi, the disk that you specified for the ESXi is going to uh, become your first data store and it could become locally, um, that is going to be locally attached to the um, VMware ESXi server. But um, in my case, I've only set it to be four gigabytes because I don't need more. I wanted to attach my storage uh, so it can be a nice CSI attached storage. Uh, so if you have this data store as a, um, if you have more space than for just four gigabytes, you can use this one and you can just create it, let's say data store one, and you can use the uh, space that is left uh, for, um, you can select VMFS six. Uh, you can select the, the space that, uh, is left from your disk so you can create the local storage for the VMware server but in my case I'm just going to create um, iSCSI disks on my Windows file server and I've already attached the two disks that I've created one is 4 gig 40 gigabytes one is 55 and I've attached them to uh, my ESXi so I can use them as a remote attached uh, storage. In the later modules I'm going to show you how you can do this so uh, don't panic but uh, yeah if you need uh, if you need that um, basically what you have to do is you have to go to the your file server if you're following my guide create the two disks um, and then attach the disks to um, the actual ESXi and I've already formatted them so they became um, data store 01 and data store 02. So if I open data store 02, another pre prerequisite that you will need as well is uh, to find an ISO image. And I've downloaded uh, Windows 7 ISO so I can use it just as a test machine. And what I did is I basically just uploaded the image. There you can see it. I've uploaded the image onto the data store so we can later attach it to our newly created virtual machine. So this is basically the prerequisites that you will need to start this module. So let's begin. So the first thing you want to do is um, after we installed DSXI, we haven't actually connected to the user interface. So uh, we'll be able to connect using a remote machine uh, and using the IP address or the host name if you already added it to your um, your domain, uh, your DNS, I'm sorry. So uh, I will use uh, Microsoft Edge browser, but I've tried with different browsers, Mozilla and Google Chrome. For some reason, it gives me errors from time to time. I assume that there are some plugins that needs to be installed, but if I find them later, I'll show them to you. So the IP address of my first ESXi host is 10.0.0.21. So I'm just going to open that in the browser and it should give me an error message saying that uh, the certificate is not uh, not trusted and I'm just going to go to the website so we can see it. So uh, the username um, that we are going to use here is the normal root uh, and password that you set during installation. So I'm just going to press enter and log in to the ESXi host. And the first thing that you will see most probably is the, um, I think it's uh, the improvement program, which you can remove. Uh, just click OK. And uh, yeah, this is the initial um, window that you will see information about the actual ESXi host. 
you can uh, we are going to go further and check all the options but uh, yeah initially you can uh, see that you have uh, the option to shut down, reboot, refresh, few, a few actions that you can do with DSXI host from here as well. You can uh, set it in maintenance mode. You can uh, select the lockdown mode if you remember from the last video. But uh, yeah, you can see the overall CPU, memory and storage that is available on the host. But uh, the purpose of this video is to create a simple um, virtual machine so i'm going to click on create register and we have few options to create a new virtual machine to deploy a virtual machine from ova f or ova file or register a virtual machine that is already on the storage so uh the second option just to provide more information if you are not familiar with uh there are appliances that are provided uh by different vendors uh, that are these ovf and ova uh, file Files are open uh, templated, open source templates that you can use. For example, from any third-party uh, software provider, they can give you this option. So you can just import a virtual machine directly that was pre-configured and exported. So it's going to make things faster. Register an existing virtual machine. Well, if you have already a virtual machine on your data store and it's not running you can use uh, this option to uh, select it from the data store and attach it so i'm going to use the first option to create a new virtual machine click next so the name is going to be nlb pc01 and uh, i'm going to leave the uh, compatibility to be e esxi 6.5 virtual machine the guest os is going to be windows and the version is going to be 64-bit windows 7. so from the storage point of view um if you don't have the two uh, two uh, storages at the moment that's okay you can use your local storage that you've created but um as I showed you, I have two, so I'm going to select the bigger one in size. And from the customized settings. Okay, so uh, I'm going to leave the CPU to one, the memory to two gigabytes, and the hard disk is going to be 32 gigabytes, but it's an important for you to expand the hard disk and just select the option to team provision it. Uh, in my case, as, because I'm using uh, an SSD, I have limited amount of storage. So I will use this option so I can have my disks team provisioned, which means that the full size of 32 gigabytes will not be uh, initially taken, but the disk will start from a low amount and will grow up to 32 gigabytes. So that's okay for me. And uh, the... Uh, other settings we can leave um, we can leave uh, for now so let's leave it uh, to, to the defaults and we can just attach the disks when attach the ISO image when uh, we are actually ready with everything so yeah everything default I'm going to click finish and we have successfully created our first virtual machine in the environment so now that we have our first virtual machine the next thing that we can do with it is we can power on the virtual machine and because it does not contain any images uh, currently attached it will try to boot from uh, pixie eboot which is uh, okay i don't have any uh, wds deployment uh, servers in my lab and yeah, this is the small console, uh, the small console view that will appear and you can see what's exactly on the screen on the actual virtual machine. But for now, I'm just going to power off the machine. And uh, another thing that uh, you will most probably need is to download the um, virtual machine remote console application so if you click on this window and if you have um, internet connectivity you'll be able to download and install the console so let me show you how this looks yes so let's see if that would work yep 
So this is a small console that uh, it's basically a standalone application and it's really handy so I would recommend for you to use it as well. So within this console we have several options and one of the options is to edit the virtual machine settings. And this is a more familiar view, um, it's pretty much the same as the VMware workstation. So from this one I will just going to, I'm just going to use the browser to attach the ISO image okay and then we can just power on the actual virtual machine so you can see on both location the virtual machine is booting up and it should start uh, loading the uh, pre-installation environment for Windows 7 so there it is and from here the process is pretty much straightforward We'll just have to install um, the Windows 7 operating system. So, yeah, until um, we have the next available option, I'm just going to pause the video and continue from there. So we have the normal um, installation of Windows 7. I'm just going to go fast through the options. And we'll need basically to install the operating system and then uh, install VMware tools on the uh, virtual machine. Okay, I accept the license terms. I'm just going to uh, use the whole disk space. And I'm just going to leave the process to finish and we can configure from the next step. Now that I've installed the Windows 7 operating system on the virtual machine, uh, the next thing that uh, I want to show you is how to install the actual VMware tools. And you can use the um, either the um, ESXi um, UI to install the uh, VMware tools or you can use the uh, console if you've downloaded and installed the console so I'm going to use the console and so you can see uh, mount tools installer on the actual UI of the XXI and the pop-up should appear um, shortly on the virtual machine as well let me just there it is so uh, yeah, it's thinking about it. It should appear basically, but uh, if not, we can we can force it. Yeah, for the sake of the video, let's just force it. So I'm going to double click and click yes, and it's going to prepare VMR tools for installation. So I think this is the auto play from the disks, but I'm just going to close that for now. So the installation wizard sure should start preparing to install and this is going to take some time because the virtual machine does not have uh, enough resources but just for testing purposes I, th I think it should be okay. So I'm going to just install the typical VMR tools and yeah it's pretty straightforward wizard that you Basically, you need to install the VMR tools and you need to keep them up to date because they are really important for the virtual machines in general. Yeah, uh, because uh, yeah, the VMR tools are used to synchronize the virtual machines with the actual ESXi hosts. Um, in a domain environment, I've seen some problems with that. So, uh, if you have uh, domain environment domain controllers that are virtual machines, I would recommend for you to stop the time synchronization because the domain controllers in general synchronize from the PDC uh, domain controller, PDC emulator, and uh, synchronizing from uh, the SXI host as well can uh, cause problems in the environment in general. But yeah, for other purposes, this is really important. And uh, yeah, there are some uh, video drivers uh, installed. Uh, you can drag and drop. And yeah, VMware tools are basically a um, pretty big part of uh, the actual virtualization environment. 
So yeah, uh, you need to restart the virtual machine and basically that will finish the process of uh, installing VMware tools on the machine as well. After the actual restart, I can log in once again to the machine. And this time you can see on the back on the uh, user interface of the SXI that VMware tools are installed. And uh, in here, if I click, I will see that I have VMware tools as well and they are running. So my virtual machine is fully set up from here. I can uh, join it to the to my domain if I need to. Uh, but yeah, for the sake of this uh, lab, I'm just going to leave it the way it is at the moment. And we are going to continue with the next lab, which is going to be uh, working with the vCenter server. We are going to deploy the vCenter server appliance and configure it. So uh, yeah, if you want to see uh, this in action, I um, recommend for you to stick with the channel, subscribe, like the videos if you if you like the content. If you don't, of course, you can always hit the thumbs down and give me an opinion what can be improved. This was Nick from NLB Solutions and this is how you can configure a virtual machine on an ESXi host. Thank you very much for viewing and see you in the next video.